Can you actually hack on Starlink? That's a question I've been asked many, many times over the last year. So Starlink, for those of you who don't know, is a space-based internet provision. So unlike your broadband or your fiber to the cabinet, this uses a satellite dish outside of the house and communicates with satellite dishes as they fly over. About a year ago, we moved to the middle of England which has really poor internet infrastructure and we were getting maybe 1.4 meg. That's less than 3G. Um, so we couldn't cope with that. So we brought Starlink, it sits out in our garden and it gives us great speeds. Now, a lot of people have said, FC, can you hack over Starlink, right? Because we run a cybersecurity company. I do a lot of pen testing. Um, am I using that for my day-to-day -day role? Well, yes and no. I don't do everything via Starlink, but I do some of it, right? So I'm gonna show you what that means in terms of speed, what that means in terms of latency, what that means in terms of downloads, what it means in terms of ping times. You know, so we're gonna go through a couple of things and I'll show you if you can or cannot hack over Starlink. First up, let's have a look at latency. Latency is something that shows how quickly things are responding, okay? So latency is really key to how quickly things respond, right? So with latency, you kind of want less than 50 milliseconds, right? If you're hitting 50 milliseconds or above, you can't even game on that. If you're hitting under that, between 20 and 50, that's, that's considered pretty good. That's average for the average gamer, right? Now I can tell you, I do a lot of gaming on Starlink, right? Because the latency is really good. It's between 20 and 50 milliseconds. And you can see here on the graphs here, it's hitting between that. You know, the maximum here is in the 50s. The, the minimums are down in the low 20s. We don't get less than 20 milliseconds because it actually takes a long time to go from the satellite dish up to the satellite system and back down again. You, you physically can't get quicker. So we're hitting between 20 and 50 milliseconds. I would say on average, I'm hitting about 30 odd milliseconds, which is pretty good if you ask me. So what about ping times? Okay, so on the laptop here, we are gonna ping a couple of places and I'll just give you real time results. There we go. So we're hitting 30, 40 milliseconds. You know, it's, it's in the average of about 30 milliseconds, I would say. You get a few packet drops, yeah, as you would on any system. You wouldn't be able to tell this is running over satellite. You really wouldn't, if, if you're just used to normal broadband. Okay, so can you scan stuff, right? Can you do uh, end maps of places? Well, yeah, you can, right? So we're just doing end map of Google. I don't know what, what it's gonna come back with. I should have really tested this. Um, oh, it's gonna take ages. Probably. No, it's 57% you know, done already. So that's pretty good. There we go. So we've got two open ports on Google. Took 14 seconds to do an Nmap scan. Not the fastest, but if you want to be doing this type of stuff over you know, Starlink, then you can. It, it doesn't take much more than broadband usage. If you were having fiber to the cabinet, in our last house, we had uh, fiber to the cabinet, which was literally right outside our house. We were getting you know, 300 plus meg um, a second. So let's go back to the Starlink app and do a speed test. And then we'll get an idea of how fast this is going to go. So I'm gonna run a speed test here and hopefully you can see Download speed, obviously it increases. This always happens with any speed test and it's gonna peak out here. It is also going to do a upload speed test. Now, obviously uploads are always slower on these asynchronous connections like this. Um, it doesn't matter if you're on broadband or not, or on Starlink, upload is always gonna be slower than download. So another question I get asked is, come on, the downloads must really suck, right? So if you wanted to download an ISO, it's gonna take you all day, surely. Okay, so here we have the Kubuntu download page. Um, I need this for another test that I'm doing later. Um, so it's Kubuntu 22, I'm gonna download the 64-bit version. And there we go. So it's actually coming down not too bad. It's gonna take like 20 minutes, which isn't, isn't the best I've seen. Um, you know, it's generally sub 15 minutes. Um, it is running a little bit slower. 
uh, we are using the internet connection as we're doing these testing um, so that's going to affect things a little bit um, but you could very easily download this within within half an hour I would say so there you have it you can you can absolutely do any of your hacking over Starlink would I recommend it maybe not as a full-time thing if you're going to be doing sort of pen testing or bug bounty hunting get yourself a VPS somewhere such as Amazon or DigitalOcean or Linode or some some other place like that and then use your Starlink to connect and use that faster speed for doing the scanning and then pull down all your results uh, locally it's, it's what we do here we have many many machines that we reach out to and then do all our scanning and then pull all the data back here for our analysis so that doesn't need that real-time quick speed um, that scanning does so I hope that's answered some of your questions about Starlink if you have any more please do put them in the comment below um, I would love to hear your thoughts and ideas and questions about Starlink